What's going on, guys? Root of the Null here, coming back at you with another Python tutorial. Let's get idle fired up and let's see what we can do here. Now, before I jump into a new script or a new program, I'm going to say in the interactive shell and show you what we're working with today, and then we can go create a new file and do our own thing. But now we're going to be looking at uh, list uh, list data types. They're a lot like arrays. In fact, array is another name for them, but it's really the idea of holding multiple values inside one variable where you can index things with numbers and retrieve information back and forth and that sort of thing. Now, remember, these are denoted with these two braces or these two brackets. And uh, for me, I'm just going to set up one that is a uh, an ascending integer array. So we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I'm actually going to set this to be a, val a variable here. Array can equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now if we check out array, we have obviously 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the function we're going to be looking at today is called reverse. Now if we uh, type in our variable name and use our dot selector, if you do control space, you can see all of these functions that we could be running with. And in our case, we're going to check out reverse. So let's type in our two parentheses. And if we do control backslash inside those parentheses, you can see the variables and the values they're going to have to pass in for arguments. Now in our case, we're kind of lucky. Reverse doesn't take any arguments. But what it will do is it will reverse the array. So if we run this, we don't get any output because it's not returning anything to us because this function doesn't return anything. Instead, it really does modify the original array. So if we look at array now, we have 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now, I myself don't like this. I don't like it when the functions actually uh, manipulate the, the real variable. So I'm just going to have it return to us when we, when we try and create it today. But, obviously, you can set this up if you'd like. You can go into more in-depth research and try and figure out how to do this. But, I don't like to, and I don't, think it's, I don't think it's something we should even bother looking at. But, hey, let's try and take a look at this all on our own. Because, see, remember, we're taking a look at uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and we're reversing it. So, in our case, 5 takes the position of 1, uh, 4 will take the position of 2, and 3 will take the position of where it's at, because array has an odd number of elements or items inside of it. So uh, let's try and create this. It's a pretty simple function, but it looks like it might get a little bit tedious. Let's try it, though. Let's create a new script here. I'm going to call mine file.python. Get a uh, new shebang line started. Create a class. We don't need these comments here, but I do, because that's just my personal programmer style. Define a constructor with the init keyword wrapped in two underscores, both on either end. Pass in yourself keyword, as always, because you should always do that when you're... um when you're creating a function inside of a class. If name is equal to main, now outside outside of the class in our global scope, we can do a conditional statement and test if this is the current script that we're running. And if it is, we can create an instance of our base class and call it root. Now everything inside the constructor will happen automatically because that's just what happens with constructors. Whenever you initialize an object, like root in our case, it'll run everything inside the constructor. So let's create our array variable. Let's do array. And now, it, remember it's a list, so we have one, two, three, four, and five. Now if we print out array, I'm going to concatenate some new lines on here, so we have to turn this into a string. And add on new line, new line, just so we see what we're working with here, and we get one, two, three, four, five. So if we now run array.reverse, we run this, nothing's going to happen, and even if we printed something out here, it'll tell us none, because that function doesn't return anything. All it does is modify the original variable, like I was saying. So we don't have to print anything out here, we can just run the function, but then we should take a look at our array variable. And I'm not going to concatenate anything on here, so we don't have to convert this into a string data type. We run this, we get 54321. It's gone in reverse now. So uh, let's try and create this all on our own. I'm going to remove these lines here. And to find a new function outside of our constructor, I'm going to call mine reverse. We need to pass in the self keyword, as always. And uh, then we're going to need, obviously, the array that we're going to be reversing. So now we need the array length. So we can loop through the thing with an index. So array length is going to be an integer data type. Integer data type. And then we can use the len function to get the length of any object. So we'll pass in the array here. And then we can, we can begin to loop through it. So for i in the range, if I can type in correctly, holy crap, for i in range, and then array length, so it'll count up until the length of our array here, and now what we're going to do is we're going to add what we find into a new array. So before we loop, we can set up a new array, and that's going to be blank for now, and now new array can equal array, remember 
what we're adding should be in a new array can plus equal because we're adding onto it. We're appending new array can equal a list data type. So we have to have our uh, our braces around it, our brackets. And now you can use array pass in with i. Now when we're done here, we can return. When we're outside of our loop, we can return the new array that we've gotten. So let's take a look at what we're what we're building here. We have successfully uh, looped through the list though with an i variable that's going to index and well it's going to increment each through each number or each element inside the list and it's going to index each thing so we're going to start at zero because that's what the range function does when you don't pass anything into it and it'll do uh, i zero um, let's see i one two three four now the thing is, we're trying to count backwards though. So if we're adding a new array, we aren't reversing anything here. All we're just doing is adding it all together. So what we should do though is try and turn this into the negative value. So that way we can count backwards because negative one is five, negative two is four, negative three is uh, three, negative four is two, negative five is one. So let's let's give this a go. Let's see what'll happen here. Let's print out print out a uh, self.reverse. Remember you have to use your self keyword because the, fun the, the function is inside our class here. We can pass an array and then we're done. Now we get 15432. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is a little weird, right? 1 is at that first index, right? So it should be over at the end, not at the front. We get 5432. That's in the right order, but 1 is just out of the blue here. Now remember this is because 1 is at index 0. And when we do that, if we do negative zero, it's still going to return zero. So new array plus equals zero, I'm sorry, array zero is going to have one. So we get one, five, four, three, two. What we have to do is make up for this one variable. So what we can do is we can start counting from one at array length. And then when we're done, we can add on, and we're done looping anyway, we can do new array plus equals the array value or the list value of array indexed with zero. So now when we run this, we get 54321 because we've started counting at negative 1. Oh, sorry, we've we started counting at 1, but when we add this to an array, we're looking at that negative value. So we get negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, except we're not getting that because it's, uh, it's part of this less than that length here. And now we can add on that final piece here, that array 0. So essentially, we're turning this all reverse and then we're adding on that bit that we would have missed. So now you can see we have 54321. Now there's a lot of interesting things you can do with this function if you wanted to. You could potentially set up a start and end for when you're reversing and that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you could decide if you want to reverse more elements than just than just one section, that sort of thing. But knowing how this works is going to be crucial for your understanding of when you might want to use this function and that sort of thing. But hey, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I know this one was a little bit... It's, it's interesting. <laughs> I mean, you're indexing with a negative value, and you have to make up for the fact that you have one that's just sort of extraneous and out there. But hey, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And I will see you in the next tutorial.